All right, let's get practicing in QuickBooks Online. Grab the link below in the description so that you can follow along. All right, here we are in the QBO Gym, and the QBO Gym is a place where we have numerous exercises that simulate real life scenarios that you may encounter as a bookkeeper. Every single month, we come out with new exercises for you to practice and complete, and we break it down for you into four different sections. So today we are going to be working in the October cool down section. At the top here is a little animated video to tell you what's going on in Craig's world that month. He is our fictitious business owner. Further down is an interactive quiz to test your knowledge as it relates to the video up above. And then at the bottom are all of the exercises within this section. So today we are going to practice reconciling the checking accounts. You will need to be in the sample company. If you are not sure how to get into the sample company or get your own free QBOA account, go ahead and click on the link below in the description. So our scenario today that as a bookkeeper, your primary responsibility is to ensure that all financial transactions are correctly categorized and match the flow of money into and out of the bank. You have just received the monthly statement from Craig's bank, and so now it's time to confirm that all the transactions have been correctly added to and categorized in QuickBooks Online. So to complete this exercise, we need a copy of Craig's checking account statement. This can be found underneath the cool down video. Um, we just need to go back there and grab a copy. So let's go back to the um, gym right here. If you scroll back to the top, you will see the animated video. And underneath that, you see this button that says checking statement. Go ahead and click on that. And when you do, it'll download for you. Um, there we go. Go ahead and click on it and you will see the statement appear for you. And I'll just hold on to it for right now because you will need it throughout this exercise. So to get started with reconciling, we first need to click on Accountant Tools and then select Reconcile. So here I am um, in the sample company. This is the dashboard. At the top here, go ahead and click on Accountant Tools and then select Reconcile. And this page will appear for you. Um, this is QBO just trying to give you a little information about what reconciling is all about and what to do and what to expect here. Go ahead and click on the green Get Started button. You will get another pop up right here. Again, it's just um, QBO saying, hey, this is what you're about to do. Um, so go ahead and click on the Let's Get Reconciled button. This will only show up the first time that you reconcile um, in a client's books. And then after that, you won't see those anymore. So we have done step two and step three. So now we need to fill out the page that we just ended up on. Um, checking account should already be selected, which if you check, it is. This is the account that we are reconciling. We need to enter the ending balance that's found on the sample bank statement. So if we go back to the bank statement, we see here that the ending balance is $5,196.11. So 5196.11, I believe is what I just said. 5196.11, yes. Okay, and then we need to enter the ending date. In, the, in a real life scenario, you would use the ending date that is on the bank statement. But since the sample company is always changing dates, for the purposes of this exercise, we're just going to enter today. So all you need to do to do that is just click into the box and then type a lowercase t. And when you do, you will see that the date for today will appear for you. And now we simply just need to click on the Start Reconciling button. So that is the green button here. Click on that. And when you do, you will see this new page appear. Um, go ahead and click on the um, any kind of pop-ups that you may have. Um, it's QBO trying to be extra helpful. Um, in real life, if you ever want to go and click into it and see what they're talking about, feel free to do that. So I'm going to take a really quick moment to pause here and just talk about what you are seeing on the screen. I'm going to refer to the screenshots here because they are already marked out and it's a little bit easier to see. Um, but just keep in mind that the numbers that are here on these screenshots are not necessarily correlating with what we are about to see. I just want you to understand what the, is on this page itself. So the first thing here um, is this beginning balance, and this is the ending balance from the last time that you reconciled. It cannot be changed. 
The next thing here, this statement ending balance is what we had just entered on that previous screen. If you have entered the incorrect um, ending balance or statement date, which you can find up here, um, then you can always hit this edit info button over on the right hand side. And that'll allow you to make changes to either one of those or both of them. The next thing you will notice down here is that each transaction has a little circle next to it. So when you have um, matched up what is on the bank statement with what is in QBO and it looks correct, you're going to click on that circle and it becomes a blue check mark. And that just shows that it has been cleared, um, similar to what you did when you're processing bank feeds. The next thing here um, is this payments and deposits. So when you have checked this off, it gets added up here to this total payments and deposits. Um, and when these get adjusted, the cleared balance gets adjusted because it is the cleared or the um, be, uh, statement ending balance. I'm sorry, the beginning balance minus the payments deposit. That combination is the cleared balance. Uh, the seventh thing here, right here, number seven here is um, the difference. And what you ultimately want to do is have this as zero. This calculation is the statement ending balance minus the cleared balance should equal zero. So that is the ultimate goal as a bookkeeper to have this um, at zero. And when you do, it feels really great because you know you're accomplished and you got everything matching up properly. And then one more thing to note right here, um, that sometimes there are transactions, they're called hidden or rogue ones that are um, supposed to be there, but are not actually there. Um, the transactions that show when you start reconciling are only those that are dated on or before the statement ending date. Sometimes dates just are a little bit off. They have an incorrect date associated with them. So um, if you can't find one of those hidden or rogue ones, then all you need to do is just click off this feature um, just by clicking the X so that you can go ahead and see um, what other transactions are available and what it might be. So in the remaining steps of this exercise, we are going to complete the reconciliation by checking each transaction until the difference is zero. If you already have any checks, uh, blue check marks, go ahead and check, uncheck them individually or um, uncheck all at once by clicking on the circle at the top of the column. You will need to turn them all on and then turn them all off. Just follow the prompts. So if you have any um, that are uh, checked off, you shouldn't since you are just starting to reconcile. But if you accidentally click one, you can just click it again and it will go off for you. And that's the same thing as you're reconciling. If you accidentally click the right, wrong one, you can just click it again and it will go off. So when we start, um, when starting to reconcile this in the sample company, you will need to close several navigation pop-ups. That's what we saw when I first pulled up that page. Um, so if you haven't already done that, go ahead and close out of them. When finished, we will begin the reconciliation by finding, um, checking, finding and checking all of the deposits um, when you've finished clicking out of those pop-ups. So first we want to sort it by the deposits. So go ahead and click on the deposit tab, um, which is right here. Currently it's showing all payments and deposits, but this just breaks it down for us so that we can see only the deposits. And that's because um, with this particular bank statement, they have it broken down that way where it's the deposits and then they have the checks and then the other debits. So um, being able to filter it on uh, QuickBooks makes it a little bit easier um, so that when you're matching them that you're only looking at the deposits here and then you have the checks and other debits. So we are using the sample um, bank statement. We are going to find and then check all of the matching deposits. So let's go through this uh, one by one. Um, the first thing that we are going to look for is a $175 or $175 deposit check. So let's look for one for $175. There it is. Go ahead and click on the uh, circle right there. Then we have um, one to Kate Whalen um, from Kate Whalen for $225. Kate Whalen $225. There it is. Click on that. Um, oops, I went uh, the wrong wrong tab. Um, for Red Rock, $156. So let's look for that. I don't see one for $156. So let's just skip over that one and keep going. Um, another check deposited for $105. Here is that one right there. Go ahead and click on that circle. 
And then uh, here's another big bank deposit for $2,062.52. So let's see if we see one of those and we do not. It is not showing up here. Again, let's skip that one and come back to it after we've gone through the rest of them. Another deposit check for $694. So $694 cool cars is right there. Click on that. And then one more here for $337.50. Let's find that one. And that one looks like it's for Dylan. Go ahead and click on that one. Okay, so we have found all of them except for two. This $156 for Red Rock and this $2,062.52 uh, bank deposit. So the first missing deposit is an ACH deposit from Red Rock. This is likely a payment on an invoice for Red Rock Diner that we just missed recording. So if they had paid using QuickBooks payments, QBO would have automatically recorded this for us. So they must have sent it directly to the bank, maybe through Zelle or some other kind of service similar to that. Usually you can catch this kind of thing when processing the bank feeds, but not always, it happens. So let's take a look at Red Rock Diner's account and see if we can match it up. To do this, we're going to hover over sales and then select customers. And don't worry about your progress being lost here. It's it's okay. Um, so go over, he, he, uh, excuse me, hover over sales and then click on customers. And then we need to find Red Rock Diner and go ahead and click on that. So let's scroll down until we find Red Rock Diner. There they are, go ahead and click on their customer name um, and you will see all of the activity for Red Rock Diner. If you happen to get any pop-ups, go ahead and click them out. All right, so here we can see that Red Rock Diner does indeed have an outstanding invoice for $156. So let's go ahead and record it. If it's showing up in the bank, it must have been received. So we need to simply receive payment and we click on receive payment on that particular invoice line. So here's that invoice one, uh, 10, 1024 for 156. Go ahead and select receive payment here um, and the transaction will appear for you. Now this payment went directly into the checking account. So in the deposit too, it's okay to select checking. And then we're simply going to save and close. So click this arrow down here and then put it in checking. Um, as a quick note here, the payment date, you would change it to whatever is on the invoice so or um, on the bank statement. So um, just know that you may need to make that adjustment, um, but uh, for right now, we're just going to leave it as is. So go ahead and click on the arrow down here and then select save and close. And now that received payment has been saved. So that takes care of one of the deposits, but what about the other one? It says bank deposit on the statement, so Craig must have gone to the bank. You ask him about this and he says, whoops, he finally took the checks from the drawer to the bank and he forgot to tell you about it. These are the checks that were received as payments but marked for undeposited funds until Craig could take, care of, take them to the bank. So let's go ahead and create a deposit for these. Um, to do it, you need to click on the plus new button and then select bank deposits. So that's up here on the left-hand side, click on plus new, and then under other, you're going to select bank deposit. And you will see these two appear for you. Um, we're going to uh, make sure that checking account is already selected, which it should be, and it is. And then we gonna we are going to mark both of the checks here. Um, they are the when you do that, you will notice that it is the total of the missing deposit that's in there. It was that two thousand sixty two dollar and fifty two cents. So if I click on this top one right here, it selects all, and that is the amount that we are missing for the deposit. So it matches up. All we need to do now is simply save and close. So click on the little arrow down here and then select save and close. And now that bank deposit has been saved. So now let's go back to the reconciliation page. To do that, we need to click on account and tools and then click on reconcile. So up here on the top, click on uh, account and tools and then again, click on reconcile. And you will see this pop up show up and it says which of the accounts you want to reconcile and it is the checking. So go ahead and click on resume reconciling. 
click it right there, and you will see that all of our progress um, is saved from before. It is showing as a default, just all of them, um, uh, compared to what we had done before where we just were looking at the deposits. Again, if you get any, uh, any of those pop-ups, just go ahead and click out of them. So now we're gonna click on deposits again so that we are only seeing the deposits and we will see that the new deposits have appeared at the bottom of the list. Again, in real life, um, the dates should match the bank statement. So let's go ahead and change that to deposit, the, uh, clicking on the deposits tab. And you will see down here towards the bottom, there's that 2062.52. Go ahead and click on that circle. And then that 156 from Red Rock Diner um, that we received payment for. Click on that one. And now we have done all of the deposits. So now let's go check on all of the checks. Um, first, we want to click on the payments tab so that we're only seeing payment transactions. So let's do that right here. And when you do, all of the payments will appear here. Let's filter it out so that you're only going to see the checks. It's going to make it a lot easier to decipher which ones need to be um, cleared versus having it all of the payments on one page. So in, um, click on the filter icon and then in the transaction type, we're going to select check and then apply. So here is that filter right here. Click on that transaction type, click on the arrow and then select check right here and then simply click apply. And when you do, you see only the checks appear here for, for you. So again, using the sample bank statement, we're gonna find and check all of the cleared checks. So let's start one by one. We have check number four for $54.55. So $54.55, click on that one. And that's check number four. That's what this reference number is right here. The numbers are the check number. Check number five for $62.01. Check number five, 62.01, there we go. And then check 70 for $185. So check 70 for $185, there it is. Click on the circle. Now, while it is not, or while it is common for not all of the checks to clear each month, that is that the recipient of that check has not cashed them, something seems off here. Only the checks from Chins, Gas, and Oil were cashed. Those are the ones that Craig actually hands to Tommy Chin. All of the others were to be mailed. Oh my goodness, <laughs> did Craig forget to mail the checks? Well, you check and sure enough, there is a pile of mail he was supposed to take to the post office. You will have to have a talk with Craig and perhaps do some damage control with the vendors explaining what happened and that their checks are being mailed right away. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and continue with the reconciliation. We're going to click on the X check um, to remove that check filter. So that's right here, click on that. And now we're seeing all of the rest of the payments show up for us. Finally, we're gonna return our attention to those remaining debits. So using the sample bank statement, once again, we're gonna find and check off the first two debit payments. So here we have two for Robertson and Association, one for $300 and one for $250, which happen to be these two up at the top. Um, you'll notice that the next two items on the list are sales tax payments. Only one of them is going to match the bank statement. So if we look right here, Board of Equalization, it says for $38.50. If we look here, you see that there are two that say sales tax payment, one for the exact same amount and one for um, very similar but 10 cents off. We want to make sure that we click on the first payment, which is the $38.50. We cannot edit sales tax payments. However, we can find out more details about them. So let's go ahead and uh, click on the um, little circle here um, next to that $38.50. And then we want to go ahead and click on the edit in, the, um, in that particular one. Um, and I'm sorry, not clicking the circle. We want to actually click into that particular transaction, not the circle. Sorry about that. Um, you want to click on this edit button right here so that you can get more information about the payment itself. 
Once again, you can't actually make an edit to it, but this is the way that you would be able to see um, a little more detail for it. So as we can see, this payment was for the Board of Equalization, which is what matches on the bank statement. Bank statement says that right there, and it shows the agency as the exact same thing. So we're just going to click on the X to close it. Um, there's nothing to worry about on that one. So back on the reconciliation screen, let's cancel and then um, we're going to repeat steps 24 through 25 to view the second payment. So again, we need to click on, you can click on this X right here so that you get out of that particular sale, uh, sales tax payment. Click on the second one right here and then you're going to click on edit so that you again can get more information about this particular uh, sales tax payment. You will see here that the sales tax agency is showing as Arizona Department of Revenue, and it doesn't look like that one has cleared yet. So we're going to click on the X to close it out. Nothing needs to be done with either one of those. It's just clicking into it um, gives you the opportunity to see a little bit more and see which one matches with which, because on the bank statement it says Board of Equalization, so we wanted to find and clarify which one was which since they are such similar payments there. So once again, using the sample bank statement, we're gonna continue checking the remaining payment and debit transactions. So let's go back to um, let's go back to our QBO. We know that this is the one. This thirty eight fifty is the correct one. So go ahead and click on the um, uh, circle next to that one to get a blue check mark. Let's move forward with this one um, for eighty nine dollars and ninety cents from Tanya's nursery. Eighty nine oh nine from Tanya's. Click on that one. Then we want to look for the one thousand dollar transfer to savings. So look for $1,000, not seeing it. So let's go back to that one a little bit later. We'll put it aside and we'll go through the rest of the statements and see what else we need to do, um, if there's anything else that we need to do with this. So look for one for $250 from Hicks Hardware. 250 Hicks Hardware, great. Click on that circle. Then we have another one for Tanya's Nursery for 10809. That is right here. Go ahead and click on that circle. Then we have, let's see here, another one for Hicks Hardware for $24.36. So $24.36, go ahead and click on that circle as well. We have one for Squeaky Clean for $19.99. So let's find that one um, right here is a squeaky clean one for $19.99. Um, one note here, if you look down at the bottom of this list, you see, or towards the bottom of this list, you see another one for squeaky clean for $19.99. If this happened in a real life scenario, what you would want to do is, it's always important to look at the payee and the amount to make sure that they're matching up, but then you would want to look at the particular date to see which one is matching up with the bank statement. Now, as you notice on our sample bank statement, there are no dates, and that's because the sample company is constantly changing these dates here. So um, to have a statement, a practice statement, a sample statement with dates doesn't make a lot of sense. So just keep that in mind if you are ever doing this in real life you want to look for the payee and the amount and then if you have the exact same payment from the exact same um for the exact same amount you'd want to investigate it a little bit more if one of the dates is not matching so just keep that in mind all right let's move through here um bob's burger joint for five dollars and 66 cents so 566 from bob's burger there it is uh, another one for Chin's Gas for $52.14. So $52.14, click on that one there. A $900 one for Hall Properties. Let's look for that one. It's a pretty big one. And that happens to be the last one right here. It doesn't have a name, but there's no other ones that are 900 or even close to it. Oh no, I'm sorry. Here it is, 900. <laughs> See, this is why you look at the payee and you also look at the payment. Um, this one is clearly the right one. So we go ahead and click on the circle right next to it there. Then we have a Hicks Hardware for $215.66. So here is that Hicks Hardware one right there. Click on that. 
And then it looks like we have one more for $3.86 from Bob's Burger Joint. So let's look for $3.86 from Bob's Burger Joint. Go ahead and click on that one. And uh, that is everything on the statement. And look, we have a difference of $1,000, which if you remember, happens to be the exact same amount as that transfer to savings. So it looks like that one transaction, um, Craig had forgotten to tell you about the fact that he had transferred money from the checking to the savings account. Again, usually you would catch this sort of thing when you're processing bank feeds, but not always. It's okay that we will get just add the transaction ourselves. So to do that, we want to go to the plus new button and then select transfer. So at the top here, click on the plus new button and then under other, click on transfer. You'll see this up here and now we need to complete it. So the transfer transfer funds from is going to be checking and the transfer funds to is savings. So um, from here, we're going to do the checking because it's coming from the checking account and it's going into the savings account right there. And that transfer amount was for $1,000. And a, a note here about the date um, that it should match the date of the transaction as it shows on the bank statement. Um, for today's purposes, we are just going to leave it as is. So put $1,000. If you hit the tab over, you know it's been captured. And now we simply just need to save and close. So click on the little arrow here and then select save and close. And that transfer has been saved for us now. So we're going to scroll to the bottom of the list to mark the transfer as cleared, and then we will be finished. So scroll all the way to the bottom here. You will see that $1,000 transfer that we just recorded. Click on that uh, uh, circle right there, and you will see now that our difference is showing as zero, which is great. This is what you want it to be when you reconcile every single time. We are simply going to click on the uh, finish now button right over here on the top right corner. When you click on that, you will get this little pop-up that says you reconciled the account, the account. congratulations. Um, just as a note in real life scenario, you would have a little button here that says attach statement. Always a good idea to have a little paper trail with everything that you do here in QBO. Um, so know that even though it's not here in the sample company because they don't allow you to do that, um, it is in real life an opportunity for you to do right here. So go ahead and click on the green done button. And you have finished now. You have um, you have now completely reconciled the checking accounts. And if you have any questions or want to know more about the QBO gym, just go ahead and click on the link below in the description. Be sure to leave this session of the sample company open as you will need it for the next exercise in the cool down section where we practice reconciling the savings account. And I will see you in the next video.